Welcome to Questing Beast. Today I'm going to make a tutorial of something a lot of people have requested, and that is how to draw deserts. Deserts are especially tricky, not because they're really complicated, but because there's not a lot there, right? Deserts are mostly uh, sand and dirt, and that can be challenging to draw without it just being a blank page. Um, so I'll give you a couple different techniques, and hopefully you will find one that is useful for you. All right, so to start off with, you can do the simplest method. Um, besides just leaving a blank space, which you can do. If you have a blank area, you can always just label it a desert, and people will read it as a desert, no problem. But if you want to add some graphical elements, uh, the simplest thing to do is just add little lines. So you add like these little texture lines going across like this. And this tends to read as you know, dirt or just uh, small, low ridges in the ground. And that tends to read as desert for the most part, just because it looks barren. Um, a, little, a way to take that a little bit farther, make it a little bit more complicated, is take those lines and use uh, stippling, little patterns of dots going across like this. This gives the impression more of dirt or sand than simple uh, lines, right? Simple enough to do. It looks a little bit better, I think. I think it reads better as sand or as loose dirt. And it takes a little bit longer than this, but really not much longer. All right, so you can take that to another level and you can do this stippling method, but instead of using lines, start actually texturing the area that you're drawing. So for example, we could uh, just start adding little dots here, representing the texture of the ground. And I tend to do this in little patches. You don't want to fill in all of the ground with uh, little dots that'll just take forever. You notice how I'm sort of doing them in these kind of wavy line shapes. It's nothing specific. I guess it kind of gives the impression of dunes maybe, or of shifting sands, but it doesn't have to be too precise really. So I'm kind of leaving some areas that are more dense, some areas that are less so, and uh, you end up with this interesting effect. The different densities of stippling gives more texture to the area. It makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. I'll just do a little patch here so it doesn't take too long. Hopefully you'll get the idea. All right, notice how the, the rows of dots are a little bit wavy, a little bit irregular. They don't go necessarily straight across. They can go in all different directions. But the irregularity and the slight waviness to them gives that impression of desert. Right? And if you did that over a large area, again with patches that are darker, some that are lighter, it will tend to look pretty good, I think. Um, another thing you can do, instead of just using little dots, you can use uh, different textures. You can use you know, normal little dots, but then add some that are larger. This gives the impression of you know larger rocks, dirt, sand, different types of materials in your desert. You can add you know like larger rocks if you want even more texture. Things like little, you know, obelisks. You can add other things like perhaps little cacti. You can add little cartoons of that's like a saguaro cactus. All right, simple enough to do. And so on. Makes your, your desert have a little more character, I think. A little bit more interesting to look at. Really depends on the kind of look that you're going for, though. Okay. Um, now we're going to get into some versions that are a little bit more complex. So for starters, we can do a uh, altered version of hills. So we're going to do hills, and then we're going to add kind of a wavy line going down the side of it to represent a dune kind of shape. So for example, you know, some hills, you want to keep the hills pretty low. You don't want them to be very tall, you know, dunes aren't very tall. But instead of just leaving them like that and just shading them, we add this kind of dune ridge line, this snake-like shape coming down out of them. They're just kind of trailing off or running into other hills. This is simple enough to do. It's just a, a version of what we've seen before when we've drawn hills, 
um, with just a small tweak added to them. That can give the impression of dunes. Taking it a little bit farther, we can do this same technique, but combine it with the uh, stippling so it has more of a sandy effect. For example, you do the same thing, but the hills are you know, a little fuzzier in outline. They have that sandy look, the looser look that the mind's eye tends to read as sand. You want to keep all the outlines a little bit vague. This is similar in a lot of ways to this, if you notice. But while this is more abstract, this looks a little more specific. It feels a little bit more like actual dunes, like actual uh, the different shapes in the sand look more concrete, although they keep that, the, that uh, sandy look that we were going for. And you can combine these two, no problem. They would work very well together. On a larger scale, you can start seeing how this would look more like a desert. Okay, something like that. Taking this even farther, we can start creating chains of dunes. And this would be done in a way very similar to the way we've uh, done mountain ranges before. Dunes tend to run in long ridges because they are the way that the wind piles up sand as it comes through. So they have these you know, series of ridges one after another. So there's a fairly easy way to draw that, and it's very similar to the way we've drawn mountains. I'll do it down here so we have a bigger space to work with. And that is, we just simply start out by drawing the ridge line, and that's gonna be this long, soft, curvy line. You can let it wander around, like so. Maybe add a couple more. It depends on how big you want your desert to be. They don't have to be one after another exactly. They can kind of go off in different directions a little bit. Although generally speaking, they should be going in the same direction because you know, one would assume that the wind is blowing mostly in the same direction. Once you have a base like that, you can begin adding the details. And that's done by showing, uh, you have two sides of a dune, right? So you have the side where the wind is blowing up the sand and that side is, tends to be kind of rounded and hard and packed. Then the other side is sloped down and that's where the sand has collapsed and that's much softer. That's what dunes look like in real life anyway. So um, you wanna have the soft side on this side and that's done by making these little lines going down like this, kind of on the edges. And they're concave, they're just curving down, showing how the sand is collapsing down in that direction. You can do that all along these and you, you can see where I'm doing it. I'm doing it where the sand kind of bulges out there because that's where you would see the outline of that side of the dune. You don't want your lines to be too vertical. They want to be fairly lightly sloped. Right? I'm just kind of sloping out like this very gently. Already you can see it's starting to take shape. Now you want to have the other side of the dune as well, but instead of being curved down like this, it's more rounded. It's harder packed. So the shape is more like a soft S going down in that direction. And it's over here on this side. Notice it's not carving, curving straight down, it's more kind of rounded at the top, and then it slopes down like that to show the shape that the wind has pushed the sand up into. Let me correct it a little bit. And now you can start seeing what it looks like. You see what I mean when I talked about how it looks a little bit like the mountains? The principle is basically the same. Once you have the basic shape of your dunes, like so, you can start adding, uh, now see this didn't work as well here. I think it's because the curve of my line wasn't sharp enough. When the curves are looking really vertical, it's hard to get the exact look that I want. So that's something to keep in mind. You can start adding detail by just adding a little bit of shading on the softer side of the dunes where the sand has collapsed, and then you get a very three-dimensional look. The sand kind of pops out like that, resulting in some pretty good-looking dunes. I learned recently that this type of desert with like the big uh, rows of dunes 
stretching on to this horizon. It's called an erg, E-R-G. That was an interesting bit of vocabulary. There we go. I think that's the best looking one. It's a little bit uh, intensive because you have to draw all of the details, but I think it looks pretty great. Uh, especially if you add enough detail. Sometimes you need a little bit more to make it, to really sell it. That seems to work. Now you can combine this with these other techniques. You can do this with stippling. And that's even more intensive because again, instead of having lines that you're drawing, it's all little dots. I'll give you a small sample. A little bit more intensive, but it might give you the look that you're looking for. So again, we start out with this sort of ridge line for where the dune is. And then we add our uh, sort of soft slope on this side. Okay. And then we can add our harder slope going down over here. All right. It has a little bulge at the top and then it slopes down like that. You can see what I mean. Very similar, but the looser look might make it read a little bit more as sand, depending on the way you want to do it. And then you add detail. And again, instead of the normal hatching of shading going that way, you would use little dots, little stippling. It would be good to use a pen for this. Pencils don't work as well, because you just have to push down harder. Whereas with pens, you really don't have to press down hard, and you can get the look much more easily. So there we go. There's a number of different ways to get a desert look, depending on the technique that you're going for. Uh, that's it for today. If you like this, please uh, like the video and subscribe, and please share it with any friends if you think that they might enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.